But another way to think of this is a kind of take a spiritual x-ray of the material universe and then say if matter is merely the vehicle of the transformations that we call the life of the universe, well then what is the inner dynamic composed of? What is it that is striving? What is it that bootstraps itself forward? What is it that self-reflects? Well, I think what it is, is it's actually information. Information is some kind of um, ontological modality that is capable of organizing any system in which it inhabits into self-reflection. So you pour information into matter and you get back DNA capable of making life. But, you know, there is a persistent spiritual tradition backed up by psychedelic and shamanic experience that says that there are also hierarchies of incorporeal and disincarnate intelligence that is nevertheless highly organized. Well, until the advent of the computer, I think we were just pretty much at a loss to form any conception whatsoever of how you could have consciousness without uh, a body. But it, the computer shows us that you can have large-scale systems which have degrees, and then, you know, there's a long philosophical wrangle which we can just stamp as for another time, degrees of sentience in operating systems. So then it, it seems to mean that information is the thing which uses matter, uses light, uses spirit, uses whatever it can put its hands on to organize itself into higher and higher levels of self-reflection. Well, then, to what end? I mean, what is all this? Is it just an innate drive toward totality? Or is it a process which exists completed in some higher dimensional space and we are somehow trapped in a lower dimensional matrix and we have to go, uh, we have to endure the illusion that it is incomplete? I mean, I don't have answers for these things. This is the business of theologians, basically, to tell us where we are in this universal machine. But I think that uh, what we can do to enrich our uh, experience and to feed data into our heuristic models is to begin to think in terms of language as the material that we need to work with instead of uh, public opinion or matter or even energy. It's meaning that we need to coax into our lives. Number one, as meaning enters our lives individually, we, became, we become more capable of raising our voices both in joyous song and in political protest, if necessary. My whole shtick, and the whole shtick of the psychedelic experience, I think, is reclaim immediate experience. Realize that you outvote all parliaments, police forces, and major newspapers on the planet. Because, who knows, they may be illusions complicated phenomenological forms of analysis can be carried out to show that their existence is in considerable doubt. But if you carry out this phenomenological reduction, you will discover that it reinforces the notion that you must actually exist and be real. So therefore, you start from that, that nub of immediate experience and real being. And extrapolation outward should be very provisional. I mean, I don't know uh, how Buddhism handles this. My, I, I, um, I grant you all a strong possibility of existing, but I'm not nearly as sure about you as I am about me. And, <laughs> and I don't think any of you should be any sure, more sure of the rest of us than yourself. 
I mean, the world could be anything, you know? It could be a solid state matrix of some sort. It could be an illusion. It could be a dream. I mean, it really could be a dream. <laughs> so it, uh, it pays to stay on your toes, I think. 